water is essential for the survival of all living things, plants, animals, human beings, and other life forms. It covers 70% of our planet in the form of rivers, ponds, oceans, and streams, making Earth appear blue in color when seen from space. In fact, abundance of water has earned Earth the sobriquet, blue planet. Water is tasteless, odorless, and colorless. It dissolves many substances. So it is known as the universal solvent. It exists in nature in three states, that is, solid, liquid, and gas. In solid form, water is known as ice or snow. In gaseous form, water is known as water vapor or steam. But the most common form that water takes is the liquid form. It is in this form that it is known as water. A water molecule is made up of two hydrogen atoms and one oxygen atom. That is why water is represented by the chemical formula H2O. We use water for various different purposes. On an average, a human being consumes about 60,000 to 80,000 liters of water in his lifetime. Water is used in households for drinking, cooking, bathing, gardening, washing, and cleaning purposes. Irrigation facilities improve agricultural output and help meet the growing demand for food from a growing world population. Irrigation acts as an insurance against the vagaries of nature. Water is also used in industries for cooling purposes. It is used in many industries as a solvent. It is also used to generate electricity. Besides, recreational activities such as swimming, fishing, sailing and other water sports require water. Have you wondered how despite consumption of water by living things on earth for hundreds of years, the balance of water on the planet has been maintained? It is the water cycle which makes it possible. The repeated changing of water in nature from liquid to gaseous form and then back to liquid form is called the water cycle. There are four main steps in water cycle. They are evaporation, condensation, precipitation and collection. Let us try to understand how the water cycle operates. Water in oceans, seas, rivers, etc. gets heated up by the sun and turns into vapor. This process is known as evaporation. Plants absorb water from the soil. They use a part of this water to prepare their food and release the excess water into the air as water vapor. This process is called transpiration. The water vapor rises up in the air, cools and turns into tiny water droplets. These droplets come together to form clouds. This process is called condensation. When the clouds become too heavy, the water droplets in them fall on earth in the form of rain, hail, sleet or snow. The process is known as precipitation. The water received by earth as rain, hail or snow goes into the oceans, seas, rivers and lakes. Summary Let us summarize what we have learned. Water is essential for life. Water vapor gets added to air by evaporation and transpiration. The water vapor in the air condenses to form tiny droplets of water which appear as clouds. The tiny droplets come together and fall down as rain, snow or hail. Rain, snow and hail supply water to rivers, lakes, ponds, 
wells and soil. The water cycle is a natural process of circulation of water from the land to the sky and back to the land again. 